Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno, the founder of Real Men Real Style. I'm filming this video in support of my article over at The Art of Manliness, 11 Quick Fixes for the Road Warrior. If you'd like to visit the article, make sure we got the link right below this. So just click on that and you can go right to the article. I'm going to breeze through these 11 tips. Now, if you'd really enjoy this video and you want to learn more about men's style, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right above here. In addition, visit me over at Real Men Real Style. I've got hundreds of articles with video support, MP3 downloads. In addition, we've got a great email list in which we give away a free ebook and audio download. And that's a great way because we stay in touch. Every week, we'll send you updates right to your inbox. Okay, right back to the article. So what are the 11 tips for the road warrior? And who is the road warrior? The road warrior is any man whose job takes him away from home. So whether you're a banker heading the other side, of, uh, other side of the country to open a branch, or you're a very specialized mechanic and you're one of a handful of men who can work on a certain type of aircraft or a certain type of machinery, and your company flies you all over the country. Perhaps you're, uh, I've got one, one of my good friends, he works for an education company and he travels, he's always out helping, going to different military bases and setting up, making sure that they've got their programs. And really, he's the one guy that does this. So from base to base, and he spends probably, I would say, 60 to 80% of his time on the road. When you're this kind of a guy, when you're always out and about, you know what it's like to forget things. And you have to be resourceful because you can't just be buying you know, new items all the time, especially when you already have it at home and you just happen to forget it. It's one of those things you just don't want all those items accumulating. So this 11 tips, they're about being resourceful. They're about finding a way. And sometimes they're going to be about stepping outside of your comfort zone, uh, especially when it comes to the sewing. Many men don't know anything about sewing, but when you're in that kind of a fix, you're just going to have to make do. And we're talking about sometimes maybe a temporary job. So the first one, no shaving cream. Well, lucky for you, soap, conditioner, uh, shampoo, any of those can substitute in the short term for shaving cream. Now, I don't know how your face is going to react and you need to be very careful. That's why you don't want to Ideally, if you've got a big meeting, you don't want to be experimenting with new things on your face. You don't know how your face is going to react. But for most of us with not super sensitive skin, we're going to be able to pull this off because basically we just want to create a little bit of lubricant on the face that's going to allow the razor to glide up and down. So you don't have shaving cream, use soap, use shampoo, use conditioner, use a lotion. In, in a pinch, that's going to work. In fact, there's, you know, you can read in the article, there, there, is, uh, there are some men who will argue that shaving cream is actually not even, not even needed. All right, your zipper is stuck. You're going to put on your, your trousers in the morning and you can't get that zipper up or it won't go down um, later on in the day and you find yourself in a, in, in a tough situation. What you need to do, find a bar of soap. Rub the bar of soap along the, along the uh, teeth on the zipper and then work it through. And this is going to provide a little bit of lubrication and it should get you through the day. Now, you don't want to overdo this and you want to be careful when using liquid soaps because you don't want to stain your trousers. Number three. Let's say you just arrived in Arizona and all of a sudden your skin is flaking, it's breaking out, or your, your lips are getting really dry. Well, you need to be carrying with you a little bit of either Vaseline or a skin protectant. The night, and I'm not talking about lotions here. A skin protectant, it's a little bit heavier, a little bit oilier. And the reason you want the skin protectant or the Vaseline is that you can not only apply that to your skin, but you can also apply that to your lips and it's going to last a bit longer. Be careful. They usually have a little bit of an oily or a greasy uh, feel. So you'll want to be careful about putting that on your hands and, you know, getting, you know, touching your keyboard or things like that. But that works out really well. And if you're looking, you know, you don't want to carry a, you know, a big jar of, you know, lubricant with you. What you want to do is get a, uh, an old contact container, you know, make sure, especially don't get it confused if you, if you use contacts and just go ahead and fill that with some of the, uh, with some of the, the skin protectant and that's going to take care of you. Okay. You get into your hotel room and you've got an iron, but you have no ironing board. Well, all you need is a flat surface and to lay out a towel. So your bed, 
a table, the floor. All you need to do is lay out a table, lay out a, uh, I'm sorry, lay out a towel and make sure that whatever's underneath can stand just a bit of heat. So you don't want to be, you know, pressing that steam iron and shooting uh, steam right onto a wood table because that, that could damage it long term or at least put three towels there. But you don't necessarily need an ironing board. Um, the key with this though is to make sure, and, and just a quick tip, pay attention to that iron, you know, go ahead and test it. You want to use a white towel because there's just isn't any type of stain that's going to get passed. If you start using multicolored towels, or if it's a brand new one, you could actually pass a bit of a stain. Uh, and, and check that iron. Make sure that, you know, anytime you use a hotel iron, you want to make sure that it's not damaged or it's not going to leave or mark your actual, uh, your actual shirt. Okay, number five, um, your black shoes are scuffed. And so you're going down, you're going to be going into an important meeting at the hotel convention center. And you look down and you've just got a big white mark on, on your shoes. Well, the great part is, uh, of all the things I'm going to mention, this is probably the least important one because most people are not going to notice that scuff. But if it really bothers you, what you want to do is just go to the, to the front desk, ask for a shoe buffing kit. They should have one. Otherwise, just grab a, a, a towel or, or a napkin and you want to spread because if, if you've already been taking care of your shoes and shining them, then you should have a buildup of wax and polish and you should be able to transfer that over. Just add a bit of spit and push that over. You know, you're going to basically bring it over. If you're not getting it to move over and let's say you've got a really deep mark or it looks like, you know, it's just a white mark going across. I don't know how you might have gotten that, but you can ask for a permanent marker. Assuming your shoes are black. Just cover it up with a permanent marker. It's going to work in a quick fix and not really do any damage to your shoes uh, as long as you only do this once or twice. All right, shirt collar is too small. You go to button up your shirt collar and lo and behold, you need another half inch, three quarters of an inch. How it shrank, who knows? But <laughs> well, there, there are a few options here. Possibly the, one of the best ones for long term change is simply cut off the button and re-sew it, moving it over about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. You don't want to go more than an inch. It's not going to look right. Uh, the, the space up here is going to become too large. Now you're asking, okay, where am I going to get the needle and thread to do this? And I don't even know how to sew. Well, sewing on a button isn't very difficult. It's actually some, It's a tutorial we'll be giving soon and getting into more detail. In fact, you go to the article. We should link to it here very soon. But uh, where am I going to get the sewing kit? Well, go talk to the people at the hotel, right? The hotel lobby, and they should have one of these little emergency sewing kits. These things are great. They give them away for free. And if you remember, even if you don't need this, always grab one from, uh, from a hotel and put one in your luggage, put one in your car. You never know when you're going to need them. They should have multiple needles, buttons, varieties of thread, and those come in very useful, especially if you know how to use them. Uh, in addition, if you've got a little bit more time, you could actually stop by a, uh, a men's store. Sometimes they have button extenders and, and that would initially. Another last minute, it doesn't normally look as good, uh, but you can do it in, in a pinch, is to take a safety pin and use that to close up your collar and then tie a tie right over that. Final tip, make sure your tie has a little bit more of a spread. So look for something like a half Windsor or a Shelby knot, and that's going to be better than a four in hand. A four in hand is a much more narrow knot, and it's not going to look as good when you've got a little bit bigger of a tie space. Okay, your sweater is pilling. So this is basically whenever the sweater starts to have little fuzz balls on it. This happens over time. Perhaps you just unpacked it and you looked at it, your wife washed your sweater or you washed it and all of a sudden you've got pilling all over this. Okay, how do you get rid of this? You wanted to wear the sweater today. Well, you're going to need at least probably 10 minutes and what you want to do is use a disposable razor and gently go over the sweater with the disposable razor and you're going to cut these right off. It's going to take a bit of time. You want to be very gentle but this will work. All right. You have a 20 ounce coffee, just bought it. And all of a sudden that 20 ounces is all over the front of your shirt. Okay. You've got three options. Immediately change. Sure. You're going to be late, but you don't want to be, you know, upset that, you know, you've got this coffee stain all over you for the rest of the day. Talk to your colleagues. As long as this isn't happening again in the end, they're going to understand. 
another option. Perhaps you're headed to the airport or you're in a, in a place where you can't change. Well, look at a pit stop. I mean, is there a Target across the street? Go to the Target, buy a $20 shirt, put it on, you're good to go. At least you're a lot better than what you were a few minutes ago with that coffee stain all over you. If you've got time and if you have access, and I'm talking probably at least an hour, you could actually wash your entire shirt. Assuming you have an undershirt on underneath, you can just take the shirt off, go into a bathroom, wash it off, put it out to dry, sit, you know, if you've got some time, maybe hang that shirt out to dry, make sure you find a towel, try to suck as much moisture out of that thing, and then leave it up to dry for an hour. A slightly, you know, another thing, if you've got an iron, you could actually, once you wash it and it's it's dried out a bit, then use the iron on the damp shirt and that will not, you'll not only be ironing it, but you're going to dry it as well. There's also spot cleaning. Now, spot cleaning, you need to be careful because you don't want to spread the stain out. And this is assuming it's a bit smaller of a stain. With spot cleaning, what you want to do is have a white rag and you want to put the stain down on it. So the outside of the shirt will be going onto the rag. The rag's down here. You're going to use gravity. And on the back side of the fabric, you're going to be applying water uh, with another white rag. And again, you want to use white because we don't want colors going through. And we're going to be using the water along with the solvent we'll look with a cleaning solution. We're going to be passing the water slowly through the material. And the stain, well, Assuming it's just coffee, it should pass through. Other heart, other ones like blood, uh, other things, well, if you've got blood all over your clothing, you probably have a bigger problem than, uh, <laughs> than the stain on your clothing. Okay, lost waist button. You're walking around, all of a sudden, your button pops off. I, in the article, make sure to go check it out. We've got some very interesting, uh, I would say very ingenious, uh, solutions to this. But the easiest one is, again, to go to that sewing kit and simply sew it back on. Now, another thing is the safety pin, but doesn't always work as well if that can break off. But again, make sure to visit the article. We've got some great ones. I'm not going to, I'll leave those ones as a surprise. The back of your pants has ripped open. If this happens, okay, it's going to be a bit embarrassing and perhaps you'll need to immediately go to a bathroom or stay seated, but it depends on the type of rip as to whether or not you can take care of it right there. Okay, so if it's just the seam and the seam is actually where the fabric comes together, you can actually grab that emergency sewing kit and a seam looks bad, but usually the fabric hasn't ripped. It's just the thread that goes back and forth that's ripped. So what you'll want to do is assess the situation. You're going to want to tie off both ends using the needle and thread, and then you're going to want to bring the seams back together and, and re-sew them. This is something that you can do in probably 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, you're going to be probably standing in the bathroom or back up in your room with, uh, you know, you're going to be you're not going to have your pants on, so you're going to need a little bit of privacy here. Um, but, but it's something that you can fix. And, and, and many of you are saying, oh, well, I can't sew. <laughs> Come on. We, we put a man on the moon. Humans are, uh, as human beings, there's a lot, lot we can do, especially when we're put into that situation. You can figure it out. And again, go, check out the article. We'll have a link and we'll talk a little bit about you know, the basics of sewing and, and show, you, show you a little bit of uh, how to get this done. Okay. Now, if your pants have ripped and it's a rip in the fabric, this is a more serious breach because you really can't sew that together. The fabric is actually coming apart or perhaps you snagged it on something and you just ripped those pants uh, <laughs> right open. Now, if, you, if, if it's a big enough hole, you're going to have to get a new pair of pants. But if it's a smaller hole, what you can do is go find, they actually have see the, these uh, rip rip uh, rip tape which you can put on the inside and then iron and it will actually seal the hole back up and if you're in a pinch grab a, an excess piece of fabric somewhere uh, whether it, I, I don't know look in a first aid kit and grab you know a piece of gauze and some super glue and what you can do is that would actually super glue it right on the inside give it give it a few minutes to uh, dry you don't want to be you know super gluing your pants to your leg but you can see what I'm doing here. On the inside, I'm creating a patch, putting it right on there, and that may be able to get you through the day. In any case, this is, especially when you're using the super glue thing, you're going to, you know, 
possibly leave a permanent mark there on the pants and you're going to want to get a new pair or have those professionally repaired. Last but not least, you forget your underwear, your socks, and you've only got what you have on. So every evening that you're traveling, you're going to want to wash these and dry them out as much as possible and hang them out to dry. Then wake up early and put them on and they're going to dry quickly on your body. Don't don't put them on a few minutes before you put on your clothing. Otherwise, you know, they're going to get your clothing wet. But give yourself at least a couple hours in the morning to wear your moist socks, your moist underwear. It's going to dry out. You'll be fine. Okay. 11 quick fixes for the road warrior. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe up above. And visit me over at Real Men Real Style and check out the article over at The Art of Manliness. <laughs> Take care. Antonio Centeno. Bye-bye.